Hi, I'm really excited to bring this Christ Revealed interview to you. Let's go ahead and jump in. Why is it the Christian generally is the only one that's faulted for thinking is right? It's, it's crazy. In any event, so uh, that, that addresses two of the main issues. Okay, the problem a, there's a derivative one that comes from this, um, as you're bringing up you know, people maybe from the East or from other parts of the world. So the derivative issue is what of the person, the human being, that's never exposed to Christianity? Yeah. So, because that's also, uh, you know, a problem in the sense of, okay, well, they never, nobody ever spoke to them about right. Christianity. Right. What is your view on that? Yeah, that, that's a common question that's brought up. And um, just a little side observation, that's, that's a problem for every religious view. Of course. If every religion claims their religion is correct, then what about the people who are never exposed to their religion? Now, I think Hinduism in some forms can get around that because what they could say is, well, here's the way reality is structured, so to speak, mm -hmm. that we're all kind of part of an illusion and we all are part of God and we just have to kind of get back to God. And whatever religious enterprise that you're pursuing will probably get you back there sooner or later. Mm -hmm. So Hinduism seems to people to be a little bit more expansive than others. Um, it has its own difficulties in its overall claims of the reality, you know, like that we're just part of an illusion. And I don't know how I could know that. I mean, does Charlie Brown know he's a cartoon character? You know, <laughs> it seems to me there's a built-in difficulty there. But in any event, um, the, uh, the, the, the fact is that this problem you're raising applies to other religions. How do Christians respond to it? And as a general response, I'll say that God judges people according to the revelation that they have, okay? They can't be held responsible for information that was never given them, right. okay? Now, before I just leave it at that, I want to say, but there's a catch to this one, mm -hmm. and that is that the story makes it clear, and here when I say the story, I'm talking about the story of reality that the Bible gives us. Um, the story makes it clear that every single person who is, who is, who is um, you know, reasonably um, developed intellectually, and I don't mean smart people, I mean that you're not a baby, right. or you're not mentally handicapped, you know. Every single person is in possession of information about the truth about God, mm -hmm. such that they can be held responsible for that. And that information is twofold. It's information inside of them, and it's information out there in the world that they can see. Okay, and those two things, that maybe they don't know about Jesus, but as one put it, they do know about, they don't know about the Son, but they do know about the Father, mm -hmm. whose presence is everywhere. So on the one hand, God will judge them according to the light that they've been given, but everyone has been given enough light to be considered guilty before God. Well, and that goes right to the heart of ethics, doesn't it? Because in the absence of choice, there is no ethics. Yeah, that's right. Uh, there's no ethical choices, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, I, well, I, a shark's not unethical for attacking a human. No, yeah. that's yes, yeah. but that's because ethics don't even apply to, sh to exactly, sharks because they or have lions no or anything. Right. Um, this is humans. another point yeah. that that um, humans are special in this regard. Clearly, yeah. they apply to us, but they apply to nothing else in the in the. Uh, created realm. Right. Uh, I, I know there's some Darwinists who want to argue differently. It's a kind of a different issue, but certainly objective morality right. cannot, is not something that, that uh, other creatures are aware of. And even the Darwinists, all they can produce in Darwinism is just another form of subjective morality. So, but that's another issue. Mm -hmm. So we've got Jesus being the only way and, and the problem of evil as religious pluralism is, these are big deals. Um, a, another, um, Another big thing is Jesus himself. I mean, Jesus is under fire. Mm -hmm. um, since Jesus is the center of Christianity, he's a sine qua non, he's a that without which you don't have it. You take Jesus out, no more Christianity. What happens if Jesus never existed? Okay, well, okay, we're, we're pretty much dead in the water. What if he existed, but he wasn't anything like the, the person you claim? Maybe there was some guy who was an itinerant preacher, but this mir miracle working Jesus, born of a virgin, 12 disciples, all this other, this is just a rehashing of the ancient dying, rising Messiah myths of the Egyptians and the Roman mystery cults and stuff like this. So a very popular claim here. Um, and a lot of people are making it today. You can find it easily on the internet. Let me just say this, that with regards to the idea that Jesus never existed and that he is just a fabrication of these ancient myths, there is 
no credentialed historian in the world that believes this. Now, when I say none, I mean, ugh, there may, you might find an outlier, but you can always find somebody to say something that's odd. Mm -hmm. They don't believe this, and the reason they don't believe this is they are working with bona fide primary source historical documents about the life of Jesus of Nazareth. Right. And they're solid and they're good and you can grow lots of information and in addition to those documents, which we commonly know as Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, mm -hmm. and some of the things that Saul of Tarsus wrote and some of the others, James, who knew Jesus, and New Testament documents, which people need to remember are not just part of the Bible, they think of it that way. Mm -hmm. These were separate documents that were circulating in the first century. It wasn't until the fourth and fifth centuries that they bound them together in a book called a codex, okay? So you can't just say, well, that's the Bible. These are the sources that historians use, and they take them seriously mm -hmm. because they're good sources. But there's also something like 17 or 18 extra biblical references to Jesus um, that give us substantive information that corroborate what we find in the more detailed narratives of Jesus' life, okay? So when you look at this particular challenge, this is a, a, an example of um, a tactic I call just the facts, ma'am. <laughs> All right, you know, okay, I, I get what you're saying. Do the facts support that claim? And the answer is no. And in, in fact, the similarities that are claimed between Jesus and these ancient myth, myths of Osiris and uh, Mithras, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, there is almost no similarity between the life of Jesus and these ancient myth mythology. These have been trumped up radically on the internet, and what happens, these stories keep going in a circle. Mm -hmm. I remember I was lecturing at Purdue, mm -hmm. and there was another big giant audience there, a bit more hostile that that night than that wonderful crowd at Berkeley. But uh, there was a whole group of atheists that showed up with their t-shirts on, you know, and then during the q and I had two questions on the same issue. And I wasn't actually trying to be glib at all, but when the first person asked the question about, um, about Jesus being just a, a rehashing of these old mythologies, I said, you know, you've been spending too much time on the internet. <laughs> what happened is everybody started laughing, and I didn't at all mean to embarrass him, but uh, this is what happens. Somebody publishes this kind of crazy story, and it really goes back to late 19th century with a, a book called The Golden Bough. Mm -hmm and um, B-O-U-G-H, mm -hmm. and, and then that got some traction, and now these stories are circulating all the time. But when you go back to the primary source documents, the old sources that tell the original myths, you don't see the kinds of similarities that people are claiming. So this is a, this is a vacuous kind of charge. Mm -hmm. When you talk to real historians, you get some entirely different story. So we are on really good solid ground when it comes to the historical evidence for Jesus of Nazareth. And frankly, that's the only evidence we need. We don't need a, a perfect Bible mm -hmm. to make our case. Um, what about all the contradictions? Those don't matter to making our case. Mm -hmm. Now, I wanna be careful when I say this because Christians might misunderstand. I do believe in an inerrant Bible. Mm -hmm. Okay, but I don't. When you when you think about the gospel going out in the first century, you didn't have the 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 apostles and all the evangelists and everybody sharing their faith, carrying around codices of scripture that they were trying to convince people were the inspired, inerrant word of God in order that they can get saved. Right. They were telling people about Jesus, who lived, who died on a Roman cross, and who walked out of that grave three days later, and who was seen by many witnesses which witnesses had their lives completely transformed as a result, mm -hmm. went to their death in many cases with this testimony on their lips, I saw Jesus. And also skeptics and, and uh, like James um, and, uh, and also outright hostile enemies like Saul of Tarsus. They were, they were changed because they encountered the risen Christ. This becomes powerful evidence. Thanks so much for joining us for this interview, for taking this Christ Revealed journey with us. Remember, if you haven't already, subscribe. That way you'll get notified about all the new content that's coming down the road. Comment. People want to hear from you, and then maybe you'll encourage somebody else to make a comment. If you did like it, like it so other people know that's something good for them to watch. And finally, share this. Send links to other people that you know and care about. Cost you nothing but maybe a few seconds of your time, but it might have a massive impact on their life. Anyway, really excited to be able to share this information with you. Thanks for tuning in.